In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare to run for public office. It is very easy to do. I am going to make it very simple and easy to understand. Stick with me to the end of this video because I may tell you some things you've never heard from anybody else and it's really important. We're going to talk about your resume, your family, your family finances, the people who are going to help you, and some mistakes to avoid. And I said this is an important video because I would not want you to make the same kind of mistakes that I've seen candidates make. Let's start with your family. If you have a loved one that you're living with, a spouse, a partner, if you have children in your household, you need to talk with them about you running for office. You know that it is going to take some time. You know, because you've seen other candidates, that you won't be home every weekend. You know that you may not be home for dinner every night. Your family needs to know the sacrifices involved with you doing this. And if you don't take the time to talk with them and get some agreement with them and make sure that they are going to be on along for the ride with you and make sure that they know the fun they're going to have when you're running for office, if they don't like what you're doing and if they're really opposed to what you are doing and if they really resent your absence, you're going to go home every night to an upset spouse and upset kids, upset loved ones who are going to really resent what you're doing. You cannot do a good campaign with that happening every night when you get home from the campaign trail. And I'll tell you a short story. We were filming a commercial for a candidate for governor once, and it was during the winter months. And we were doing his house. Uh, we were doing a commercial about his family and his children, and they were all in the commercial that we were shooting. When we got there, his wife was not home, uh, so we kind of moved our equipment into the house. We had three cameras and lots of wires everywhere as we shot this footage. While we were shooting it, the wife came home with two bags of groceries and noticed that the back door to her kitchen was open and wires all over the floor and it really irritated her because it was below zero outside and all that cold air had invaded her house and she flipped out. Her husband had never told her that he was doing commercials in her house that day. He knew that she did not want him running for governor. She had voiced her objections to that and unbeknownst to her, he had scheduled a shoot to do his first commercial. And she exploded in front of the entire crew. The groceries got thrown on the floor, she was so upset, and they got into a heated argument. At what point she said, I'm just going to leave, and he said, why don't you just get out? And she stormed out the door. It was one of the most uncomfortable moments of my career, and frankly, that's the place that I learned, that if you want to have a life as a candidate, you really need to consult with your loved ones, your spouse, and your children. Don't let that happen to you. Second thing I'm going to mention here is take a look at your resume, even if it's already in circulation. Take a look at the information that you may have on your LinkedIn profile or your Twitter account or your Facebook account. Take a look at that bio that you may have shared with a lot of people and go through that with a fine tube comb and make sure that everything that you have in that resume and everything that you have in that biography is dead on accurate. Because if you are in a competitive election, the first thing your opponent is going to do is go through your bio and fact check everything in it. And if you've intimated that you graduated from college when you didn't, get it off your resume. If you suggested that you volunteered for an organization where no one ever saw you, these Little white lies and exaggerations will come back to haunt you in a campaign. You need to be able to defend every line that's in your resume and don't 
make the mistake of allowing something to be circulated that isn't entirely true. Campaigns involved financial sacrifices. Candidates are away from home. Uh, candidates don't always have time to put in a full work week. Candidates who are self-employed don't have time to service a full roster of clients, so sometimes they have to cut back. And there are obligations that happen during the course of the campaign where candidates are tempted to invest some of their own money. Don't ever allow your family finances to suffer because you decided to run for office. At the outset, make sure that you can afford to spend time away from work that you can afford to do without those clients that are normally sending you money for work that you get done and make sure that your family finances can handle the burden your campaign is going to put on them because this is the truth. Your kids, your family, they still need to eat. There's still a budget to meet. There is still food to buy. There's still a mortgage to pay. There's still credit cards to pay. And if you're struggling financially during the course of the campaign or there isn't enough money to buy groceries, you are going to have a difficult day and a lot of your loved ones are going to be saying, why did you put us through this? Next thing I'll mention is the habit of being informed and staying informed. During the course of a campaign, you're asking voters for the power to govern. You're asking for a license to have some say-so in their lives, and you're asking for power to fix a problem or do something that is important to them. In general, voters are not always well informed about everything, but if you're a candidate for office, they're going to expect that you will be well informed. So make it a habit to stay in touch with the news during your campaign. That means every day before you leave your house that you check the newspapers and see to see if there was some calamitous event in your jurisdiction the day before or if there's earth shattering news coming out of Washington that affects the political discourse or if there's some war that got started in some place in the world that affects America's posture. Voters will expect that you are well informed because you should be as an elected official, and you never want to be caught off guard by being ill-informed or clueless about some major event that has happened in the world or your jurisdiction. I'm also going to make this suggestion as you prepare to run for office. It is impossible for you to know everything about every issue that may arise during the campaign. And I've worked with a number of candidates who organized something that call their mastermind group. And a lot of them did it very early on during the course of their campaign. And that is a group of five, six, maybe seven people that you consult with who know a lot more about a subject or a particular issue than you do. You should convene a meeting of your mastermind group every so often, have a little pizza party and just ask them to spend a couple of hours that evening educating you about what you need to know in order to be a better informed, more articulate candidate. So for example, if you're running a community where there seems to be a shortage of housing. You might want to recruit someone who knows the housing issue backwards and forwards who can advise you on how to fix the housing problem. If you live in a community where there is a lot of poverty and a lack of business development, you might want to bring an expert on board that can tell you as a candidate how you can fix that. Now, you be the judge of the political salience of what they're telling you, but it's better that you have more knowledge than less knowledge, and I find that the mastermind groups are people who help keep a candidate well-informed, on course. They do the reading for the candidate and basically summarize it for the candidate so that they know what they're talking about on the campaign trail. There are two other things worth mentioning here. One of them is your social media. If you have a Facebook account and you're used to posting, if you have a Twitter account and you have through the years posted your thoughts and opinions, you have an Instagram account where there's kind of a record of things that you've said, a good idea at the outset of a campaign is to go through everything that you've ever posted, everything you've ever retweeted, 
every comment that you've ever made. And if you find something that some people in your jurisdiction may find offensive, the time to get rid of that is before the campaign starts. The worst time to get rid of it is when your opponent finds it and makes it blow up in your face after the election is underway. So this is just like talking to your family and making sure of your family finances. Get rid of the nasty stuff that you may have said on social media in a moment of anger because you don't want the whole jurisdiction reading about that stuff on the front page of the newspaper. The next thing I'm going to mention is the art of knowing yourself. There are four pressure points in a political campaign. One will be the press that wants you to talk about things that you really don't want to talk about. They do that all the time and you do have to deal with it. You'll get pressure from your donors. If you say something that upsets them, they're going to call you and say, why did you say that? I gave you money. How dare you say something like that that really mucks up my business and I really don't like what you said. They will pressure you when they think you've gone off key. You will have special interest groups that you may have met with, that you may have made promises to, who may not like it when they think you may be backing off those promises because of something you said in a town hall meeting. And then there's the ultimate pressure point, the voters. They're the ones who decide whether you win an election or not. All of these pressure points are going to put pressure on you during the course of a campaign to bend your moral code and conform to the way people want you to behave that may violate your notions of right and wrong. I've seen my share of candidates who sold their soul to stay in office. I've seen my share of candidates who outright lied during the course of a campaign when they were catching heat from somebody. You have to establish your boundaries at the outset of a campaign and refuse to bend. Ultimately, if you get caught prevaricating or lying about something or saying something that was offensive to people, you will pay a price for it. Know your boundaries at the outset and you will be able, you'll never be ashamed of who you're looking at in the mirror when you shave or put on your makeup. I mentioned that I have a free gift. It's a link to a special video, How to Become a politician. If you're thinking about running for office or getting ready to run for office, watch that video because it's got a lot of information in it that I did not cover in this one.